Hi fiends, thanks for joining me. I'm Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. If you are a fan of indie horror, and I'm guessing that you are, you know this guy. You may know, may or may not know that you know this guy. He does special effects works, he's an actor, and he's been known to be a uh, man of silent threat. Join me as I talk to Jason Brooks. Jason, thank you so much for joining us here on Donna Jean's Coffee House of Horror. Yeah, thanks for having me. And you are, you've, you've been a man of many things in the indie genre. You've been a writer, director, actor, and in fact have worked in the indie film since about 2003, I believe, for a while. Yeah, off and on, um, been kind of a little bit beyond that too. Um, I've done quite a bit of things kind of off IMDb and uh, just helping an independent film here and there. You are certainly no stranger to slasher films as you played <laughs> Jason Voorhees in Vengeance 1 and also wrote and directed 2. Um, Dice was written and directed by Jeremy Rudd, who very clearly, like yourself, has a love of and is paying homage to 80 slasher films. The kills, the chase, the whole feel of the film. Could you give us an introduction to Benjamin, who is the scarecrow backslash slasher? Absolutely, yeah. So Jeremy Rudd um, originally came to me um, and my partner Naomi to do this, the special effects to kill the gore, and um, and possibly some of the the character design of Benny, the, the scarecrow. And as we got going on that. I had mentioned to him, you know, I played Jason Voorhees in Vengeance, Vengeance 2 Bloodlines, and Roseblood, and I do a lot of this kind of stuff. I would love to have the opportunity to audition for that. And, and he, um, he was like, that'd be great. No, because we, we need a six foot five, 245 pound kind of a lumbering person. I'm like, I, I fit that perfectly. So um, we talked about the character, and he really wanted to have a character who was very child minded, um, like a five, six year old who um didn't quite know right from wrong yet who was very playful but didn't know his own strength didn't know um that what he, you know killing was wrong you know he just he just loved doing this kind of thing and and hurting people just part of it so uh he kind of gave me that little bit of a backstory that he killed his um his family at one point uh, which we cover pretty early on in the film mm -hmm. um and and just said, here, let's go with that. And so over time, you know, I would come up with the character and go back and forth to Jeremy, asking him, you know, if this fits within his vision. And I think it was probably about day three or four on set. Um, I was kind of like doing what he had said, but it was about day or three or four before I felt like I finally got that character and the mannerisms and got everything down right. So um, it and then became, became Benny. And so that was a lot of fun. Once I kind of got that hook and was able to just go in there, um, you know, get that makeup on and then get on set, that's when it really, he kind of took life. So it was, it was fun playing that character. Hearing you say that um, brings to mind having, having just watched it, of him dressed as the scarecrow. Um, that is a very childlike thing to do. And yet, you know, we in the horror genre, we're so, we're so accustomed to seeing scarecrows as being scary. But in the mind of a child, you know, it would be something that's more kind of like, oh, let's play, mm -hmm. you know? So that makes perfect sense. Yeah, and when we were going with the designs, um, I know Jeremy had a very specific look. He gave me a lot of pictures of kind of cute scarecrows. And, um, and I was thinking more along with the really scary, like, let's make him look really horrifying and scary. And he's like, no, like the Wizard of Oz. And, um, and he showed me a couple of kind of craft style, um, home, home craft scarecrow costumes. And, and so we came up with this, this nice blend. Uh, and he wanted prosthetics. He wanted my face to be shown. He didn't want to be covered in burlap or anything. He really wanted the expressions and the eyes and everything. So um, I think that when we got our collaboration together 
it, it really came together and um, it was better than I expected. And I think he thought uh, the same as well. It, yeah. yeah, we love it. So really between clowns and scarecrows, we really are going to destroy most children's images of what are fun and healthy. <laughs> <laughs> With any luck, we will, I think. <laughs> I well, speaking of clowns, um, we do live in somewhat of a renewal of slasher films right now. Those of us who are fans of the indie genre, just to throw out Art the Clown. Um, yeah. Did you do you find yourself drawing any inspiration by any of these new slashers, kind of giving you a renewed energy for your character? Um, in a way, no. It was the opposite for me. So um, David Howard Thornton, I love him to death. I met him a while ago. We become friends, um, and you know Damian Leone. So I really have a lot of love and respect for what they do. And when I read the script, I know Jeremy um, in writing it, he had mentioned he took a lot of inspiration um, from them and really liked what they did and so it inspired him a lot and through those conversations it made me feel like i really want to veer away from that as much as possible because you know they did what they did great i don't want to copy them you know i want to i want to make our own thing um and so i wanted to make sure that i was not art the clown um and as much as the script and the character you know is doing a lot of similar things uh, i just really wanted to make sure that um we're kind of setting it apart, making it its own thing, because Art the Clown's already been done. It's been done well, and um, there's no need to to copy that so or recreate it. Um, so I, I was, that actually put a little bit more of a challenge in me to say, okay, here's an Art the Clown type character uh, who is playful and he likes to kill and he does all these gruesome things. Um, you know, checks a lot of the boxes of Art the Clown, but how can I? play it differently? How can I move differently? How can I be a whole different character? And, um, and so that's, that was my extra challenge is to kind of take that character and, and move away from that. This is a good time to be a, to be a horror fan. This is a really oh, yeah. good time to be a horror fan. Absolutely. Let, let me, um, so you basically started out as being involved with the special effects. Um, yeah. And it's pretty amazing knowing that you could come up with this whole character and be, be not only doing the, um, the aesthetics and giving it life. So basically throw out the idea of any CGI here. This is all practical. Yeah, hundred percent. And that's yeah, actually have, awesome. That's what we love to do. I, I run real fiction studios. Um, and we do a lot of that, that, I mean, that's what we do is practical effects, gore. Um, we make replicate bodies out of silicone and body parts. And, and so all the kills in that in that movie, in Diced, as well as Vengeance 2 Bloodlines, that's all from from me, from my, my group, the people on the team. And um, I just, I'm really proud of what, what my team's been able to do with that side of it. And um, and I think we've, we've gone so far that sometimes as we get onto other projects, people forget that I also act and do this other stuff. So we've been kind of becoming known more for the special effects. Um, so every once in a while, I like to remind the director, like, hey, you know, <laughs> I can, I can also do this if it, if I fit. If, you know, I'm happy to, to audition for it. But it's um, it's a lot of fun and being able to be the killer while doing the special effect that you build, you know exactly how it works, all the intricacies of it. And, um, and I think it helps with the performance too. I know what it can and cannot do, how it will look the best, how to cheat it to camera so that it looks the best um, and plays right. So it's it's a good combo. And you've worked with some, really some icons in the horror yeah. genre. How was it working with this team? What was the, uh, the dynamic there? On Diced? Yes, I'm sorry. Oh, it was, uh, yeah, I, it was, it was great. Um, the, the DP, uh, Tyler Jones, he was amazing. The team he brought, everyone there was just super professional, um, great at what they do. Uh, the lighting was phenomenal. The, the camera work was, you know, just amazing. Um, sound, the, you know, we brought the special effects. 
the actors were great. Um, Eden Campbell, you know, she's been in Fear Street. She's our uh, our lead um, lead uh, final girl in this. She was wonderful, and just just everyone was great people. So we had a lot of fun on that set, just um, making a lot of things blurry. There was definitely a uh, a horror dynamic between you and Eden, the final girl, and. Um, if that doesn't work, it doesn't work. Yeah. And it, it, it really did having watched it. And uh, was there anything that I think um, you would have brought into the movie that you, that you found was lacking in terms of uh, storyline or anything along that line? Yeah, you know, as because I'm a writer, director myself, and uh, I always have creative ideas. I think for me, um, there's elements I would love to have seen more. I would have loved to see more of Benny's backstory um, and maybe play into the, the relationship between Benny and um, Cassandra, who was Eden. Um, that would have been fun for me. And But, you know, there's there's always opportunity to do a sequel. Um, right. With, in talking to Jeremy, you know, you could always go back and learn more about the characters. But I think I would love to have spent some time building up some suspense um, and uh, really letting the Benny character kind of breathe a little more and, um, and kind of exist in that world. So you can kind of get to know a little bit of the, the crazy side of him. Um, right. So, but the, you know, it's just biased because, you know, I get to play the character. So of course I want to see more <laughs> of me. <laughs> what you just touched on was exactly what, what I, I had been thinking after I watched it. Um, of course, the real twist at the end of the film between Cassandra and Benny that you don't realize is playing out until the very end, and I'm not going to say what it is, no spoilers, mm -hmm. that definitely, that's like opening the door to part two. And what I hope is exactly what you're just saying, that at that point can possibly see some of Benny's past, see some of not necessarily what drove him to this because um, the childness, childness with which he does it is more his his mind but the whole relationship thing how he was drawn to her and uh, so you see a part two coming that would be great I mean I'm, I'm in <laughs> if we do one <laughs> <laughs> so we'll just have to uh, have everybody kind of uh, jump on, watch this, give it reviews, say we got to see what happens next. So, because yeah. that ending really left an open door. That'd be great. And if we could uh, have a, a, you know, a good proper budget to, to make a part two, what it should be, that would be amazing. Um, yes. I think there's a lot more we could do. Let's see, and I want to bring this up um, because I noticed when I was looking up information about it, that, uh, DicedTheMovie.com has available t-shirts, signed, set, used logo, logo chairs, and someone can even buy that full Scarecrow costume. Oh, so okay. I kind of, yeah, that's, it's actually kind of cool. So I want to make sure you're six foot three or five and fit into yeah, that. Six five and. Six. <laughs> so I just wanted to kind of throw that out for a check out DicedTheMovie.com see what they have because I have to go get me one of those shirts now. Now I watched it on Amazon Prime. I actually ended up streaming it and buying it on Amazon Prime. Do you know if it will be branching out to any other streaming services? Yeah, um, I just heard recently that he's going out for a few more. Um, I believe he said Apple TV, Tubi, um, uh, as well as some others. So. He's got a, a newer version that he's working on. Um, he was under a time constraint, uh, put put one version out, that, but he has mentioned online several times in places that the new version will be on the, the new platforms um, and the current Amazon Prime will be updated if it's not updated already. Beautiful, I'm gonna keep an eye on that then. <laughs> and so will you guys out there, cause it's really worth, worth checking it out. And, uh, Jason, for yourself, do you have any projects coming out that we should keep an eye out for? Yeah, we 
We just got done with a, a few things. I'm wrapping them up right now and uh, working on a couple of new ones. We have 259, uh, written and directed by Cody Newton, which is a demon possession story based on true events. Um, so we're excited about that one. Uh, we did the special effects for that. I play the, the demon. Um, Disappointment Girls, a Jason Hawkins film, uh, another amazing one with a lot of gore and, and effects. That was really fun with some amazing, talented actresses. And, and we got to do some terrible things to them. So um, that'll be fun to watch. And we're working on one now, uh, written and directed by Peter Anthony called Lap, which is more of a dark drama uh, type, of, type of movie with horror elements. I wouldn't call it a horror movie, but it's definitely gonna have gore. And um, we're getting ready to go fly out to Connecticut. We're out here in, in our little studio working on those pieces to, to get out there. Um, and we've got a couple other ones that that are kind of in the on the back burner that we have ready to go as soon as we have the time open up. And I I meant to mention this too, but uh, any of you gore fiends out there, you won't be disappointed if you see Diced. Uh, it has it has Goro plenty, and uh, and the story that is also worth following for those who are in it for the story and the gore. Um, Jason, is there somewhere people can follow you to keep an eye on what you're doing? Oh, sure. Most of my social medias are the Jason Brooks official. Um, you can go to, to www.realfictionstudios.com, uh, R-E-A-L, so realfictionstudios.com. And we have all of our social links there. You can see some of the movies we're working on, um, some of the effects we've done in the past, uh, all that. So that'd probably be the, the quickest, easiest way to find all of our links. Beautiful. Thank you so, so much. Of course, thank us. you. And uh, I'm really looking forward to watching this again and seeing the uh, the updated version. And check it out, you guys out there. Thank you so much. Thank you.